Hello and welcome to the Airship Pirates world. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a quick new uh, feature of the Movecraft plugin and a new craft that is designed to take advantage of this new feature. The craft is the factory craft. So this is a factory over here. It was not made by myself. It was made by um, Captain Archer, uh, a.k.a. Anton. I'm not sure which name you prefer to be associated with your work, but uh, there it is. I think, it's, uh, I think it looks pretty good. Very nice looking factory in my opinion. Uh, so what is a factory? Well, a factory is just a large craft that is used to build other crafts. And you do this using the repair feature. All right, so here we have a uh, SHSF Piranha. Uh, that, that's a ship that I did make. Look, see its little, little face? Yes, yes, it has a face and teeth. Anyway, um, so this is a very small artillery ship. You know, it's got this uh, high-powered cannon in it. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's a submersible ship. It's supposed to get in position and, uh, and, and bring the rain, so to speak, on whatever target you prefer. Let me show you this gun real quick. Just because, you know, it's a cool gun. Um, so, okay, and yeah, sure, okay. fire. And... Oh, and it doesn't work! <laughs> oh, how anticlimactic. I forgot that this area has TNT turned off. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, just for the lulls, I will show you this cannon in operation. All right, I have moved somewhat outside the admin area on the survival server. Hopefully nobody sees me. Someone could come along right now and steal this ship which was admin created, and it would disrupt the entire economy. No, not really, but um, it wouldn't be great. But fortunately, I don't think anyone's out here at the moment. It's like almost 3 a.m. at the moment. Yeah, uh, I was kind of obsessing about something all week. Um, it's, it's a long story. Hopefully it'll be ready and I'll be able to show it to you next week, but it, it, it'll be awesome if it does work. And, well, I know it works. Ah, okay. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> it's awesome. I'll show you next week, I hope. All right, here we go. Yes, let's fire this thing. Boom! And, yeah. It's a very powerful gun. Very long range. Shoots good. Kills people. Very good. Very good. Uh, I should probably go see, make sure I didn't just blow up someone's ship. <laughs> Someone, Someone's randomly, you know, wandering by on the survival server. A shell comes out of nowhere and blows them away. What the? <laughs> uh, no, okay, it looks like the shells went over this mountain somewhere. And I don't even see where they went. Well, that's the problem with artillery. They tend to shoot, like, a long ways. Okay, yes, back to the main point. I will now undo and remove that ship that I placed that I should not have placed. All right, back at the factory. So, yes, um, all right, um, so how does, I, I, I got a, a couple of requests to show how the factory actually works. And, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but nonetheless, let me just show you and, um, and maybe it'll give me a chance to talk to you about some other things. So, okay, uh, let's fire this thing up. We will turn the ship. You know, I just realized that's too high and I probably can't get inside it. Oh well. I will use a little admin magic. Um, yeah, so, okay, so the big thing is repair. So, repair has been around for a long time, and people have been using factory like things uh, in order to produce ships for a long time. Um, the difference is now it will fill the ammo for you. That's actually a really big deal. If you're not on the server, it may not be obvious why that's such a big deal. But uh, this is actually a good ship to, to explain why. Really? Holy cow. Apparently I pasted this factory way too high. Let me just try some of the other ones. Is that any better? Yes, good. Um, yeah, so uh, ammo. First off, it's really expensive. Um, but if you buy in bulk, you can get it cheaper. 
Uh, so you can, if you're willing to make the TNT yourself, and TNT is the most expensive piece of ammo, if you're willing to make it yourself, you can go buy the sand and buy the gunpowder at special locations on opposite sides of the map. Uh, gunpowder is from Stova. Uh, sand can be purchased in Airy. Although you can get your own sand easy enough. Anyway, um, you can manufacture the TNT for half the cost. What's more, the previous method of producing ships in mass quantity was using structures in a box, and the uh, structures in a box, we charge double for ammo. And now why do we do that? Because ammo is such a huge pain to load. Like a ship like this. Uh, there, this has, uh, let's see, this has 20, I believe? 20 dispensers of TNT, and many of them are buried deep inside there. So it's nearly, you know, it's, it's a major pain to reload this gun. You've got to, like, you know, monkey all over the turret and, and dig through it. It's, it's a major pain. So you want an easy way to be able to reload uh, the ammo on a ship, right? Uh, and, well, or, or I shouldn't say reload, but rather to produce a new ship that already comes stocked full of ammo. You could use a sib, but sibs are really expensive. This sib for this ship, this is a small ship, right? This is about, this is smaller than a Barracuda. Actually, a lot smaller than a Barracuda. Um, but it's, uh, it costs like a half a million for that ship. Let me close the door. Um, and you know, that's a lot of money. You know, I, I guess we have some pretty rich people on the server, but at least to me, that's a lot of money. I can't, I can't be wasting that on a ship that's probably going to get sunk while I'm, you know, taking into a combat zone. So, yeah. So, you, you, uh, to use a factory to build it, you pay one quarter the TNT cost compared to a sib, or one half the TNT cost because you buy in bulk compared to building it yourself. Um, all right. So, I have landed my ship on the factory floor. Uh, if the ship was too big to fit inside this factory, there's supposed to be a landing pad on the outside, and you just land there. Uh, and now, I will go up to the control area. I, I like this layout, I think it's awesome. Just use this elevator to go up here. And now I am in the control area. And I, you know, you, you can just kind of imagine all these engineers scurrying around on the factory floor. Anyway, alright, so then you pilot the factory. And you brought a sign with you, because you planned in advance. And I will use Admin Magics. Okay, uh, have I, I don't think I've talked about size. Okay, this the size of this factory is 21K. A factory can produce a ship that is half its size. Oh, and that needs to include the ship that is on the factory floor. Oh, I'm sorry, it needs to not include that. So that ship's about 1K, give or take. Um, so this ship, or this factory, is about 20k, give or take. Which means it can manufacture any ship up to half its size, or any ship up to 10k. Now, the total factory size limit is 50k. But you don't actually want to make a 50k factory, because then, if you land the, your, the ship that you're going to manufacture, if you land it inside the factory, you can't pilot anymore because now it's greater than 50k. What I'm trying to say is that the useful limit of size of a factory is about 30k. I mean, it's really a little bit bigger than that. I'm not going to do the math right now. It's 3am. I'm tired. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's about 30k. And you can make a ship half that size or 15k. You could make a 20k ship, but you'd have to do it in segments, which is eh, possible, a bit of a pain. Of course, 20k ships, it's arguable whether they're actually useful or not. I would argue they are not. Anyway, back to the point. So I have piloted it. Now I shall place my repair sign. Repair, repair. And I'll give it a name. I will say Piranha Loaded. Um, I'm not sure what else I need to say. Uh, I guess the facing doesn't matter, so yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, and I just realized that sign is not part of my, f my piloted craft, so I'm going to repile it. 
and uh, it's now slightly larger. And I'm going to left click the repair sign, which is going to save the state. Okay, so there is now a repair state of this factory with that ship inside it. Okay, got it? Right. Uh, and now I'm going to release, and I'm going to take the elevator back down to the first floor. And here we are. And now I'm going to pilot my ship, which this is a submersible. It's uh, actually you can't get back inside it unless you bring like a stack of dirt or you land it in the water where it's meant to be land. But I can fly, so that's fine. And we'll pilot this thing and realize I didn't open the door. <laughs> and then I will swear quietly to myself and I will go open the door. There, now I can get out. Uh, yeah, some important notes. Uh, if you try to repair it with the door, like if I had saved the state with the door closed and then I opened the door and tried to repair it, I would then have two doors, which is kind of a pain. Uh, some of this, you're gonna have to have a little bit of trial and error. All right, let's take this thing out of here. This time I can use the ship because I am, or I can use the regular sub airship type. What is the size of this? 1157. Okay, I had forgotten. Uh, it's been a while, little while since I made this. You know, like uh, a month? That's forever in Airship Pirates time. Everything's changed since then. It's actually true. Uh, so this gun, I, I'm actually. This gun, I think, was pretty good. You know, it's, it's, it's quite small, and yet very strong for its size. But the funny thing is, I now have guns that are as powerful as this, that are uh, a quarter of the size? Yeah, a quarter of the size. Um, yeah, I'm actually a little worried about that. But, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, okay, yes, back to the point. Uh, what I'm worried about is... Uh, uh, it got to the point where guns were so powerful that um, that it was a problem, and I don't want to get to that point again. Um, anyway. Okay, going back up. Yeah, it's all fun and to, you know, lay waste to your enemies and stuff until you realize that pretty soon other people are going to use the same mechanisms and lay waste to you, and then it's like, oh... What's the point in even having my awesome battleship if uh, a ship one-tenth the size has just as effective weaponry? <sighs> okay, right, so I repilot it, did I, and I didn't close the door, which I will now go do. Cheating. Cheating for the win. And close the door. There's a, there's a remote sign somewhere around here, but I can't be bothered to find it. And now to manufacture a new ship, all I have to do is right click here. And it's gonna say, oh, okay, here's all the pieces that you're missing. You know, uh, you need all this stuff. And nope, I need 500 fireballs. Let's see how much TNT. Yeah, 1600 TNT. And I think that's only enough for like 25 shots. So if you were really doing this, you'd probably load up more ammo into that thing, now that it's cheaper, have maybe 50 shots worth of ammo in it, loaded, ready to go. And it's going to tell me money needed to complete the repair, 11,000. <laughs> if, uh, if you're used to the cost of sibs, then you may recognize that that is a paltry amount, 11,000. That's nothing when it comes to building warships. But of course, most of the cost is in the actual parts. All right, before I actually go through with this and build this thing, I want to show you this factory's uh, storeroom, supply room, whatever you want to call it, uh, which is in here. Again, very, very nice. I like the organization here. Presumably, if this was a real factory that was not pasted out of nothing, you'd label all these and indicate what was put in each of these aisles and you'd have you know just 
huge amounts of building materials so that you'd be ready to build whatever you want and you don't have to keep coming back here and restocking this. Um, but I've simply filled a, full of, uh, a few of these chests with some of the basics that I need, all of the TNT, um, more TNT. Uh, a couple quick notes, a lot of you probably already know this, but the repair system doesn't care what color of material you're dealing with. So I'm just using the white wool, that's the cheapest, right? Uh, so you want to save money, you're just going to use the white wool, and it's going to change that wool to whatever color it needs to be. In the case of the piranha, I know that most of the wool is blue. Ditto with the white stained clay. So, uh, uh, yeah, you only need to get one color, it doesn't matter what it is. And the important one is stained glass. Everyone knows it's a huge pain to get the correct color of stained glass, because it's difficult to, to find the correct dyes and everything. But you don't have to. It does have to be stained glass, but it can be any color stained glass. So yeah, white can become any color. So whatever ink is easiest for you to find, if you live in the desert, maybe that's green, if you live near the ocean, maybe that's black, just get the stained glass of that type. And then one other kind of curious thing that is non-obvious, and that is the slabs. Half slabs on the ship, Unless they're wooden half slabs, that some of the wooden ones are a little different. But most half slabs are all the same block ID, and it considers those to be the same color. So what I'm trying to say is, you don't need to worry about what kind of half slab as long as it's a half slab. Alright, and I got my end stone in here for the reinforcements inside that thing. I've got, you know, coal for the torpedoes. Yeah, I've got everything. Okay, yes, let's do the thing. Time to do the thing. So I will once again admin magic back up to the control room. And I think I already piloted, but I'll do it again just to be sure. And I will right click. It'll list all the parts. I'll right click again. And it will say, hey, you idiot, when you were preparing for this video, you forgot two parts. And I will say, darn it. And then I will go back over here and I will put a stack of levers and redstone torches in one of these chests. I think that one, yes. Redstone torches, levers. So the nice thing is, once you have your factory stocked, you probably don't have to come back down here each time, right? Because you're just gonna put tons of stuff in here, so you always have extra, and you don't have to keep coming back, and you can just mass produce ships. And then I also like the fact that the factories are going to encourage people to uh, actually worry about logistics. So I mentioned you can make TNT yourself much cheaper. But you probably, if you're a faction, you probably need an entire boat, uh, like cargo ship, full of TNT. So you're going to have to go get that and you're going to have to ship it to your factory. So. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some logistics involved. You're going to you're going to have to actually run cargo ships full of ammo. You know, just like you'd have to in uh, you know, in an actual war effort. I, I kind of like the the realism there. <laughs> I just repiloted again. Apparently, I really like to repilot this. Okay, and it is now thinking about rebuilding that ship. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could actually watch it construct a thing? Maybe I should do that sometime. I was originally going to do that with the repair system, make it slowly construct over time. Anyway, uh, so this is going to take 578 seconds, or about 10 minutes, for a 1k ship. If it was a huge battleship, it would take an hour and a half. Um, and, you know, that I mean, sure, that's a long time, but I don't have to stand here waiting. I could go do other things while it's being built. And it's still, you know, no matter what, it's going to be a, a lot less time than trying to build it myself. That is for certain. It's going to be a lot less time than just trying to arm it myself. I know, because I was trying to save money, and so when I was preparing for the most recent war, I was putting piranhas in uh, uh, various, uh, you know, like, staging areas. And, uh... It took me, like, an hour per ship. And I was like, man, this is a pain. You know, loading up all of the TNT, and it was expensive. I spent, I think I put 64 shots in each, uh, in each one. And I remember I spent, I spent a few million um, 
on the ships and the TNT. Yeah. <laughs> but we were, you know, all the ships were in place and we were ready. Uh, and then nothing happened. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> we all showed up at the airy siege event. You know, I shouldn't have messed with that door. I wonder if that's going to screw up the repair. Huh. I don't know. I've never tried that before. Huh. I wonder what's going to happen. I guess I'll leave it. I'll leave it how it was. It's probably going to be fine. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's this big war, and and for the most part, we were kind of sitting it out, you know, letting letting people do their thing, even though, uh, you know, a lot of the people in the SHSF, uh, uh, they they wanted some action. It's not that. Well, there there was a couple of different voices. There was there was there was a couple of different people who wanted different things, had different goals. Um, but anyway. Uh, after the war had been raging for a while, and uh, uh, it, it kind of, it was pretty good. I, I would have to say it was definitely our, our, our best conflict on the server yet, in terms of, you know, we kept the, the, the cheesy tactics to a minimum. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of actual good airship combat. Uh, I monitored most of it. Uh, I tried to make myself online all the time so I could like watch make sure everything's going okay and, and let people know. I, mean, I tried to give a lot of warnings because I didn't want I didn't want to like ban everyone who did anything wrong and then everybody has a bad experience and, and I'm not saying that I wanted to tolerate cheating and if people had actually cheated I definitely would have banned them but w when there was things that I felt were kind of well you know he just kind of screwed up he probably didn't understand what he was supposed to do I just kind of said, uh, you're not supposed to do this, uh, don't do that. Um, and, you know, there's there's a little bit of arguing like there always is. But for the most part, it was really good. It was great. Um, good fights. Um, I saw a lot of, a lot of good action. Um, and then, uh, you know, it was getting towards the end, and, and, and I talked to a lot of the, the, the players involved, a lot of the leadership involved, <clears throat> and... A lot of people were saying that, you know, we should probably wrap this up before it turns nasty. And, and so you know, we were going to uh, uh, join right at the end, um, kind of saying, okay, well, uh, the Royal Navy had, had lost uh, Airy. They, they were pretty outnumbered, honestly. Um, I'll probably get some, some flack for saying that, but it, it is how I feel it was. That, um, it started out... Well, anyway, you know, the various sides joined into the fray. Um, the, the IA joined against the Royals, um, and, and that kind of set the balance against the Royals. Um, and, and so they were outnumbered, and, and they were losing ground. Although they were they were putting up a good fight, don't get me wrong. And so were the the other side too. I and mean, like I say, we had some good good combat. <clears throat> um. But then we're like, okay, well, the Royals are out, outnumbered, and they lost Airy, so what we're going to do is we're going to join in just to kind of set things back to the way they were. So, so we had this, like, official declaration of war where we said that our goal here is to return territory to the Royals. That's what we're going to do. And uh, their allies, if, if they had lost any territory, which they... I, I, I'm, I, honestly, I'm trying to think if they ever did. It's really late. I'm tired. Sorry. Uh, but, um, anyway, so, yeah, um, so we, we joined with the specific goal of, look, we don't want to have a prolonged engagement, but there are some people in our faction that do want to have a little bit of action, so we're just going to join the war with the express purpose of, uh, uh returning the territory to the pre-war borders, getting, getting the royals back into Airy and anything else necessary to return to the pre-war borders. And I, I was thinking, you know, we'd probably have a couple fights, and then uh, the various factions would settle their differences, and that would be it. Um, uh, and and it, it did turn out that way. It just happened a little faster than I thought it would. That, that, that basically, uh, you know, the IA basically says, all right, well, you know, we, we, we accomplished what we came to do, and so, uh, yeah, go ahead and take Aerie back. We're not even going to contest it. Um, so... Uh, you know, so we did. Uh, we showed up. The Royals were there. It was a massive fleet. It was a huge number of ships there. 
Um, and, and we just kind of sat in the airy uh, siege cap. It was not contested, so we just sat there until the siege finally succeeded. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and it was my idea, uh, which sounded like a great idea at the time, uh, where at the end of the siege, once the siege is successful, let's have every ship in the fleet do a, you know, uh, a cannon salute. You know, like they used to do in the good old days. You'd have like the, you know, the Age of Sail. Uh, a 20-gun frigate would fire off its cannons as a salute uh, uh, when it was entering a new harbor or something like that. And... Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> as we were getting ready to do it, I, I started thinking, you know, I wonder what's going to happen if we all fire at once. That could be really bad. And I think I even said something like, you know, we're probably all going to explode uh, or something like that. And we pretty much did. That's pretty much what happened. I was in a piranha, one of my piranhas that I had very expensively outfitted and prepared. <laughs> and... Uh, and we all fired our guns. I have it on video, but it, it's very laggy. And all, about half the ships exploded, including my piranha, which was lost. And another SHSF ship, not a piranha, it was a diadem, was lost. And uh, a couple of Royal Navy ships took some heavy damage. I think at least two sank. I don't remember exactly. I remember the really big one, uh, the Spirit of Engineering. It was okay. Um, and, and yes, then I learned two very important lessons. First, do not have every gun in a fleet fire at once. That's a really bad idea. Second, design cannons that uh, have fail-safes. Uh, so, <laughs> so that if the propellant never goes off because of lag, the projectiles do not explode inside the barrel. So all of my guns I've designed since then uh, do not have this issue. But that one does. Uh, it's, I don't want to say that it's like dangerous to fire. It's solid. You know, you can fire a hundred times. Uh, and I have. Uh, whenever I'm testing a gun, I do that. Um, and not have it explode. Uh, unlike some of my earlier guns, like the Barracuda, which is infamous for exploding. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, but now... I, I want to design guns that survive even in the event of ridiculous server lag, and so the new ones do. Uh, which, by the way, is really easy to do. There's two approaches. Either hang the, the barrel over the side so that the projectiles drop harmlessly away, or make sure that there's water under the barrel. Yeah, anyway, easy to do. Um, this should almost be done. So any second now, we should see our completed... Piranha. And there it is! It's amazing what those engineers can do. They just uh, <laughs> make it all appear out of nothing in seconds. It's amazing. I don't know why it takes 10 minutes for them to prepare. 10 minutes, of course, being an entire Minecraft day. So I don't know why it takes the engineers a whole day to prepare, and then they just instantly manufacture the thing. But it's incredible what they can do. Okay, so some quick notes. You'll note, yeah, the there's some screw-ups on the signs, but they all work. And the only reason, like, this crew sign would have my name on it, except it was empty to begin with. Um, so it would work, except it was empty to begin with. Um, let's see, what else to show you? Um, yeah, same thing with the private signs. They would have worked, except they were empty to begin with. Um, oh, yeah, the big thing. Yeah, okay. Ammo! Woohoo! And you'll note, it has uh, rearranged the ammo. <laughs> so, it doesn't restore exactly what was in the, uh, what was in the box, uh, what was in the dispenser. <clears throat> so if you try and, like, load it full of quartz or something, it's not gonna work. It only fills, uh, fireballs and TNT, and it only restores the count of them, not their position. Uh... Same thing with here. We've got ammo in these containers. Life is good. So there you have it. And now I can pilot this thing and fly it off into the sunset. And I will have to open this door 
I'm tempted to try to blow the door away. Oh, oh, fuel. Yes, important note. It does not, it does not put in fuel for you. That is the one thing it does not do. Uh, so you do still have to put that in yourself. But honestly, ammo is like 10 times harder to load than fuel. Probably more than that. All right. Um, I wish I could blow a hole through that door. That would be so satisfying. I'm going to fire angrily at it, and it's not going to work. Sigh. And then I'm going to launch my torpedoes at it. Except they're not torpedoes and would blow up the ship if they worked at all. Oh! <laughs> they do work! <laughs> um, okay, so apparently the admin area... <laughs> I didn't even get it off the factory floor. The admin area apparently is not protected against torpedoes. Good to know! Oh man, clearly I need sleep. I will go take care of that. And uh, um, yeah, uh, that's how you use factories. I think I'm a little um, exhaustion drunk at the moment. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.